After drugs, humans are the second most trafficked item in the world. Human trafficking is a fact of daily life in Tampa Bay, and this is all happening right in your own backyard. Who would ever have guessed such ugliness could live alongside such beauty? My initial reaction when I encountered a victim of human trafficking is a call to be open-minded because their stories don't make any sense. The story sounds very crazy at the beginning, but when they start talking a little bit more about everything that they have gone through, uh, I realize that there is a lot more there. And sometimes I want to ask them questions. Why, why did you dare to risk so many things and go with somebody, leaving your home country and going with somebody that you didn't even know? But that's what traffickers are looking for, desperate people who are risking everything they have for a better chance. I had a girl when I was 15 years old. I lived with my mother in my country. Yo, nos costó mucho trabajo encontrar dinero para vivir, así que hace dos años tuve la oportunidad de venir a los Estados Unidos a trabajar limpiando casas para un hombre. Él me iba a pagar 10 dólares la hora. Estamos desesperados, así que yo vine. El primer día en los Estados Unidos me compró ropa y me dijo que tenía que acostarme con unos hombres. Fueron 25 hombres al día. Vivíamos en un cuartico bien pequeño. Nos podías escuchar llorando hasta que nos quedábamos dormidos. Me dijeron que iba a tener un trabajo bien pagado, donde iba a tener dinero suficiente para mandarle a mi familia. En cambio, viví en esa casa. Con 30 personas más, hombres y mujeres. Me obligaban a trabajar 18 a 20 horas al día. Nunca gané dinero. No tenía dónde ir. En las noches podía escuchar que violaban a una jovencita. Ella siempre lloraba. Lloraba y lloraba. Y gritaba, por favor, mátame. Human trafficking is definitely a major issue in the Tampa Bay area, Central Florida area also. Um, most people are not aware that this is going on and it's not going to stop until we are all aware of the signs and be able to help law enforcement with it. The traffickers target these victims because they know that these victims are coming from a very poor country where they cannot support themselves, even their family, their kids. So they will do everything they can to bring food back to the table. The more sophisticated human traffickers actually use our own immigration system to entrap people. They use third-party contractors. We call them contratistas in some countries. And contratistas recruit people for companies here in the United States to work. And they charge them thousands and thousands of dollars. $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 for a visa. Well, people don't have that amount of money, and so they mortgage everything they own. When they come to the United States and are working on this visa, they're actually tied to that employer. And what that means is if they want to leave or quit the job, they automatically become out of status, illegal, or undocumented. And this is an enormous amount of control that employers have over workers. We call that debt bondage. And that happens right here in America. Surprisingly, human traffickers have little trouble getting their hands on victims. So willing and eager are most to escape desperate circumstances in countries where hope vanished long ago. 
who in their situation wouldn't be receptive to the promises of a life a million miles from all that? The labor cases are different once they are here. Uh, for example, they, this con contractor, you know, say you're going to be working in a, in a field for six months. But when they come to the field, they're ending sleeping in a mobile home with 10 or 15 men. And they always tell them, you know what? So how much you're going to charge you for the rental? How much you're going to charge you for the food? And they end up getting no pay. And the situation continues and continues and continues, and thus they never get free. In conversations with victims of uh, human trafficking, you realize that they don't know what they have been a victim of. They don't know they are the victim of a major crime, such as human trafficking. They normally come in the office with a small complaint, and sometimes the complaint can be about unpaid wages, or people who feel victim of a fraud and they feel that they have been tricked out of money, but they don't feel themselves that they have been a victim of a major crime. Uh, the brothels are usually called uh, 21 clubs, and uh, usually how they're solicited is by business cards, word of mouth. During the investigation, we've found out that the brothel will make about 2,000 a day, uh, $25 a person, and sometimes the, the victim will have to sleep with about 25 um, johns a night. It's not only the language barrier, that we have to overcome as law enforcement, but it's also the cultural barrier where they're not gonna to speak to someone that is not of their culture. So it is very difficult to detect, it's very difficult to investigate, but it's something that um, we're very determined to do. It's estimated that between 15 and 20,000 people are trafficked into the United States every year, most of them women and children. The International Labor Organization has warned that this global financial crisis is making a dangerous situation for increased forced sex and forced labor. The poor are becoming more destitute and more vulnerable than ever. It's hard to detect human trafficking. For an example, if you, uh, if you conduct a traffic stop and there is a, a person transporting marijuana, for an example, and you can smell that, you know, an officer can uh, make a case and arrest that person for possession of marijuana if it's a significant amount of trafficking marijuana. Well, it is different when you're a trafficking person. You can't arrest a person for, you know, being in a car with a woman or, or several women. It is important to understand that uh, drugs are, are an item that can be sold um, and they're gone. But when you have a person that you're trafficking and utilizing, especially in a brothel, they can continue to be reused for, um, for the service and continue to make money for that person. So what can you do about human trafficking? Learn about it. Look for signs. The ugliness of human trafficking does not have to live alongside the beauty of Tampa Bay. It doesn't have to live anywhere. In order to stop a crime like human trafficking, people have to be aware that this is happening in Tampa Bay area. People don't know that Florida is the second preferred destination inside of the United States for traffickers. When we are educated in this matter, when we know that it's happening, we start looking for signs and things that used to look normal to us start to raise flags and sometimes is the best moment to call law enforcement. Me recuerdo que cuando estaba a punto de dar a luz, me llevaron a Clearwater. Me abandonaron con mi bebé. No puedo ni comenzar a explicar lo feliz que me siento de que no me tengo que despertar y sentir miedo. No me, no me he recuperado completamente. Me ha costado mucho trabajo volver a ser normal y sentirme como un ser humano. Y no sé si me voy a recuperar completamente. Lo que sí sé es que